Good afternoon. 
Welcome to the inauguration of the 13th president of Huntington University, Dr. Sherilyn R. Emberton. We are pleased that you have joined us for this special and historic event. We ask now that you would please stand for the processional. seated. Well, good afternoon and welcome to another great moment in history for Huntington University. 
It is the inauguration of our 13th president here at the university, and it is a special occasion, and we're just glad we can share with all of you who are so special to the university. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Savage, and it's my honor to serve on the Board of Trustees for Huntington University. And I would like to take a moment to acknowledge all of our participants who are sitting here behind me and are going to be speaking today at this inauguration. We have our community and state leaders here with us today. We have our current and previous bishops of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ here today. It's always such a warm feeling to see them here with us. We have the President Emeritus of Laterno University, the President of East Texas Baptist University, and our own previous presidents of Huntington University, Dr. Eugene Habecker and Dr. G. Blair Dowden. And we have so many others from colleges and universities, from the Council of Christian Colleges and Universities here today to share with us in this moment. But we would first like to open in prayer. And so I would like to invite Luke McConnell to the podium. Now he is not yet Dr. Luke McConnell. However, he is the president of the student body for Huntington University. Will you all pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that you present to us today to be able to celebrate this um, awesome time in history that we have um, here for the university. Thank you for all the people who are here that support Huntington, who have supported Huntington in the past to make it the awesome university that it is today and to be the historical um, place that it is. I pray that as we go through tonight that we are able to celebrate President Emberton as she comes into her role in this time of transition, that we are able to um, accept her and grow her so that she can become the best president possible and be able to create this university to be um, great and continue throughout the rest of this year. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for the way you can will continue to bless this university and the way that you've already blessed it and already plan to do that in the future. Um, help us to have a great time tonight and to keep us all safe as we leave here in travels. And we pray. Amen. On behalf of the citizens of Huntington, I want to welcome each of you to this great city and to this great celebration where we are inaugurating the 13th president of Huntington University, Dr. Sarah Lynn Emberton. One of the great things about being the first person at the platform is that I can take as much time as I want and the rest of these nice people behind me can figure it out later. <laughs> I am a pastor and a politician along with being the mayor of the city of Huntington and I've learned over the years that uh, um, a, a, a sermon is 20 minutes and two points, a political speech is 30 minutes and no point, and uh, I'm choosing to do neither today. Since, 19, since 1897, Huntington University has been a vital and dynamic part of this city's culture and fabric. Growing up as a young person in the College Park area, it was my privilege to grow up close to this university and to be influenced by three of the 12 preceding presidents. When I think about Huntington University and the sign that used to set out on College Avenue at the corner of college and campus where character and culture blend, I'm reminded of E. DeWitt Baker, who for me is a model of what it means to pursue steadfast faith. I remember the privilege I had as a student to serve on the initial Long Range Planning Committee. Dr. Eugene Habecker, and as a model and a role model and a mentor for me through the years, Gene has demonstrated to me what it means to be a person of broad vision. And over the last 15 years, coming back to Huntington to serve in a variety of roles, Blair Dowden has been important in my life as a role model and a mentor in what it means to have profound influence. So the lessons that I have learned from Huntington University have not just been in the classroom, but they have not just been also living in the neighborhood, but they've been being around those who are people of character, people of culture, 
and people whose character matches their conduct, and they are people of integrity and people who help show the way to a better future. I appreciate what Huntington University has done for their 116 years in helping individuals, students, and this community integrate faith and learning and to create a Christian worldview that not only makes Huntington a better place to live, but makes all of us better persons at the same time. It was here through the influence of faculty members, presidents, and students, and family that I understand what it means in my life verse, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, that I am a sinner saved by grace and called by God to serve. And we see that time and time again with our outstanding alumni who not only serve here and so well in the city of Huntington, but in Indianapolis, in Washington, D.C., in Los Angeles, in Chicago, and all points in between. It is indeed my privilege to be an alumnus of Huntington University and to be the mayor of the city of Huntington and to have had role models that have helped me understand that we are here to make a difference for good and for God in this world. God bless you today. On behalf of the delegates, which collectively represent hundreds of years of experience in higher education, I bring you greetings at the presidential inauguration of Dr. Sherilyn Emberton. Dr. Emberton and I became fast friends at our first introduction in 1999. Today I'm also here as a representative of her alma mater, Texas A&M University in Commerce which was founded in 1889 as East Texas Normal College by Professor William Leonidas Mayo. Professor Mayo based his East Texas College's curriculum on that of the college he had attended, Central Normal College in Indiana, Danville, Indiana. His motto for the school became ceaseless industry, fearless investigation, unfettered thought, and unselfish service to others. Mayo exhibited ceaseless industry as he built the walls of his private school and farmed to make ends meet. He fearlessly investigated truth in his teaching. He included chapel in the early years as a part of his pursuit of unfettered thought. And he gave his all to serving students. I think Professor Mayo might speak about Dr. Emberton, alumna of his school, as exemplary of his own motto. She works industriously as an indefatigable leader pursuing excellence. She studies the places, the people, the programs, and sees the opportunities, the possibilities, and investigation with fearlessness. Her thought processes are unfettered but solidly founded on her faith, which inspires her to serve unselfishly. She finds genuine joy in each student's success because she that knows that they will grow as servant leaders themselves, and students love her. If Professor Mayo could be with us 125 years later, he might express some degree of surprise that a woman was being inaugurated as the president of Huntington University. However, he would not have been surprised that an educator, as principled as he was, was capable of great leadership as a forester. We the delegates are honored to celebrate this momentous occasion with you. Joyous greetings in the matchless name of Christ. Speaking for the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities and Christian Higher Education, I am thrilled to convey heartiest congratulations and warmest greetings to you, President Sherilyn R. Emberton, and the entire Huntington University community on the grand and glorious occasion of this presidential inauguration. Today marks a marvelous match made in heaven between a terrific leader in President Emberton and a tremendous university in Huntington University for the great benefit of this community, this world, this generation, this time, and even eternity. 
I first met Dr. Emberton at our council's New Presidents Institute this past July, and I was immediately struck by the fact that she is a rising and spirited star in Christian higher education. In Sherilyn Emberton, we quickly saw a powerfully passionate president who persuades, an intellect which inspires, an academic who articulates and achieves vision, and a leader who likes to laugh, an important attribute of leadership. She is the real deal. She will be a great president in a line of great presidents of this fine university. Now it's sometimes said that being a college or university president is a lot like being an undertaker in a cemetery. You have a lot of people under you, but none of them ever seem to listen to you. <laughs> well, I want to assure you that when President Emberton speaks, all of us, absolutely all of us, in Christian higher education will be listening. So on behalf of the CCCU, we now warmly welcome you, President Emberton, to leadership not just of this great university, but also in the great global movement of Christian higher education. Our 175 CCCU Christ-centered colleges and universities from across the nation and around the world join today in spirit and in truth in celebrating this magnificent milestone with you. On behalf of your CCCU presidential colleagues around the country and world, President Emberton, I now posit a pledge and share a secret. First, the pledge. I pledge to you the strong and faithful support, the heartfelt loyalty, and the powerful commitment of the CCCU to you and Huntington University. We also pledge the warm friendship, the genuine collegiality, the faithful prayers, and the wise counsel of your fellow CCCU Christian College and University presidents. And now, for the secret. Through many years, numerous college and university presidents have revealed to me the secret of a successful presidency. It's really quite simple. All you have to do is to transform ambivalent administrators into lofty leaders, frenetic faculty into passionate professors, spirited students into serious scholars, and doubtful donors into generous givers. Then, double the enrollment, triple the endowment, and quadruple the basketball team's wins, <laughs> and then set your goals for the next year. <laughs> Congratulations, Sherilyn, and may God richly bless you and this great university. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. I am deeply honored to be a part of this special day at Huntington University, but I'm even more honored to represent Huntington University in the Indiana State Senate and to have been adopted by the Huntington University family uh, as, as, a, as a part of this uh, uh, community and playing a role in the future of this institution. I also want to bring greetings from our great governor, Mike Pence, who couldn't be here today. He's actually doing his first governor's motorcycle ride. He learned to ride a motorcycle just for the ride today. But one thing I've learned about our governor, those of you who have met him, uh, would attest to this as well, is he is a very thoughtful fellow. And when I told him about Dr. Emberton and, and what I would be a part of here today, he wanted me to, to let you know one thing, uh, Dr. Emberton, and that's uh, we know that when you're from Texas, your heart is always in Texas, but uh, you, can, you can call yourself a Hoosier now. And if you, need a, if you need a written permission slip to do that, the governor said he would send one your way. Um, but uh, congratulations on, on today and becoming a, a part of not just Huntington University, but a part of the future of, of Indiana. Uh, these, are, these are exciting times for higher education in our state. They're challenging times too. I, I came here this afternoon. I was at, in Marion just down the road this morning where a new president was inaugurated there this morning too. Um, I don't know if that was pure coincidence or fierce competition in higher education. <laughs> I'm told Huntington University planned this event first, um, if that tells you anything. But, but um, these are exciting times, but challenging times. We know the statistics and they're troubling. Tuition and fees at universities in Indiana have doubled 
over the past decade alone. Indiana ranks among the worst states in the country for student default rates. It's becoming simply too difficult to acquire a college degree. Yet Huntington University stands out as an exception to the rule. Graduation rates are higher here. The leadership of this university under Dr. Dowden before and I'm sure under, under Dr. Emerton in the future will do everything they can to control costs and make a, a college degree affordable at this institution. The student default rates are lower here than almost every other institution in the state. And that's why I propose to you today that Huntington University is perfectly suited under Dr. Emberton's leadership of this great institution to help Indiana to be a partner of our state in meeting our greatest need, and that's preparing our workforce for the jobs of the future. I look forward in my role of, of partnering with you, Dr. Emberton, and your leadership team in making that happen, and I appreciate uh, all of you for being a part of that as well. Congratulations once again. Well, good afternoon. I'm Connie Lawson, your Secretary of State, and I too bring greetings from the Governor and the State House. And it is a quite an honor to join you today as Huntington University inaugurates Dr. Sherilyn Emerton as her 13th and first female president. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Emerton. You know, I have worked alongside Huntington uh, alumni during my nearly 30 years in public service, and I always knew uh, that they were uh, special individuals, but it wasn't until recently uh, that I looked more deeply at Huntington University's mission statement. And I was particularly moved by the university's commitment to help students develop their abilities for a life of God-honoring service to others and for personal fulfillment. What could be more uniquely who's your way of developing our next generation of leaders? Now, Dr. Emberton, I understand you've come to Huntington from Texas, but let me say that the Lone Star State, State's loss is most certainly our gain. And uh, also the governor wanted me to send you a message about how much Indiana is so much like Texas, <laughs> except for its size except for the number of people, except for the absence of oil fields, except for the average rainfall, and our state troopers don't wear cowboy hats either. <laughs> there are obviously many assumptions that Texans can make about Hoosiers and vice versa, but I will make you a deal, Dr. Emerton. I'm not going to assume that Texas is just what you see in Friday Night Lights in Dallas if you don't assume that Indiana is just what is portrayed, and I hope you know about this show because I didn't until my staff wrote this, Parks and Rec. <laughs> so what Indiana lacks in size, though, we more than make up with Hoosier hospitality. And uh, you know, even if you've just been here for a day, you know that Hoosier hospitality is more than a slogan on a license plate. It is the basis for the fabric of our communities. And it's a spirit that connects us to do good work for us and for our neighbors, for our communities. It embodies the spirit of this institution that yearly contributes tens of thousands of hours of volunteerism for the surrounding community. I know that everyone here, including myself, is looking forward to great things to come at Hun Huntington University during your tenure. And in the last few years, I've watched as this university student population has grown tremendously. And as the campus continues to evolve and reinvent itself, I know that you will continue that tradition of excellence and God-honoring service. So once again, on behalf of the state of Indiana, congratulations on your inauguration and welcome to our great state. And may God continue to bless you and this university. No, I'm not Congressman Marlon Stitzman. I saw some of you checking your program. Unfortunately, he could not be here with us today, but he did send his greetings, and I'm gonna read that letter before you now. Dear friends, while the official duties of my office prevent me from joining you today, I offer my best wishes and congratulations to Dr. Sherilyn Emberton on her appointment as the 13th President of Huntington University. 
Dr. Emberton has shared her commitment to making this place to equip young men and women for the Lord. She has certainly come to the right place. Since its founding in 1897, Huntington University has educated young men and women, equip equipping them with a Christ-centered education and preparing them for success. I'm confident that Dr. Emberton's vision and dedication will serve Huntington's students and faculty well. The student body, faculty, and Huntington University community have my deep admiration and warm wishes. I look forward to successes to come. Sincerely, Congressman Marlon Stutzman. Will you all stand with me as we sing the hymn that is located in your programs? Dr. Emberton, it's a joy for the Church of the United Brethren in Christ to have you come to be the leader of this uh, university. It's a, a joy for uh, the bishops who have served, or as I now serve, uh, to be able to share in this special moment with you. I want to share a blessing for you and then have... Uh, a couple of our bishops are going to pray. I want to encourage you to be a loyal light bearer for Jesus Christ. And in him find wisdom and righteousness and joy. May he bless you as you exhort and encourage students to become noble people who make noble plans and by noble deeds produce fruit that will stand the test of eternity. May he bless you with courage as he did David with, gentleness of, with the gentleness of God as he did to Barnabas, with the wisdom that he did to Solomon. May you know the faithfulness of Paul and seek the one thing that matters. As Paul said, that you may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I leave you with this blessing. I know my God and understand that he has made you to do great exploits for him. He has made your hands to be strong and your work to be rewarded. He encourages you to follow the ancient paths and to walk in them so that your soul may be at peace. May God bless you as you serve him and as you lead this university. God bless. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bow before you, thanking you for Huntington University and the way it has trained men and women
to impact their world for Christ. We thank you today for those who have led this great institution in the past. Persons such as Blair Dowden, Gene Havecker, DeWitt Baker, and Elmer Becker. Now today, Father, we thank you for the privilege of inaugurating a new leader, Dr. Sherilyn Emberton, to lead us in the future. We thank you for her life and for her commitment to you. We thank you for her vision. We thank you for her enthusiasm. We thank you for her commitment to Huntington University. Now, Father, grant her wisdom to carry out her duties, courage to move forward, safety in her travels, and good health as she serves you as president of Huntington University and as she motivates us. Thank you for hearing us and granting these requests in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our God and our Father, we thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for all of those on the faculty and staff who joined us for weekly prayer meetings, praying that you would direct us as a university to the right person to become the new president. And it's with great joy that we come together today to bless Dr. Emberton as the answer to that prayer. Thank you for her willingness to follow you. Pray that you will bless that willingness with wisdom and understanding that comes only from you, wisdom that goes beyond her experience, which has been very strong, wisdom beyond her education, which has been very good, wisdom that comes only from you, Father. And we pray that you will use her to bless this university in every possible way through the faculty, the staff, and the students. We are your servants. We're here to serve you, and we're so thankful that Dr. Emberton is now going to be giving the leadership that you have blessed her with to our students, our faculty, and our staff, to our trustees, to our community, our foundation, to our donors. God, we are blessed, and we want you to continue to bless us by blessing Dr. Emberton in our presence. And it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Mayor Fetters, uh, I'm aware of your comments about uh, taking time and being brief. Uh, I will try to be so, and I was reminded when my wife and I boarded the airplane yesterday uh, at our airport, uh, a local pastor, actually he was one of your former board members, uh, President Oliver, when I told him what we were coming to do, said, well, be brief and be funny. And then he said, you know, there's never been a bad short sermon. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I will seek to uh, do that as well. But it's a true honor to be with you today to assist in this process of formally bestowing upon Dr. Emberton the full mantle of the presidency of Huntington University. I admire and have known this institution for a number of years, largely through the life of your leadership, and you've had some outstanding ones. 
I've known Gene Habecker since before he came to Huntington when he was uh, on the West Coast and he and I shared roles at institutions there. My wife and I have known Blair and Chris Dowden since before they came to Huntington in their previous role and have shared a, a number of wonderful experiences at meetings of the Council for Christian Colleges and I even visited the campus at uh, Blair's request several years ago to, to participate in some assessment uh, that uh, the board wanted to have done, a process that I think uh, all institutions ought to follow as they seek to improve themselves. And of course, I know your current leader, uh, Dr. Sherilyn Emberton. I want to commend the Board of Trustees and, and all of the others of you who participated in the process of bringing her to Huntington. You have chosen very well. From the moment I first met her as she came to help us lead Laterna University, I knew we had a winner. If there was something that needed to be done where creativity, quality, faithfulness to our mission, character, multitasking talent, and just plain raw energy needed to be applied, Sherilyn was the best person for the job. And I can think of no one who left a bigger gap or a bigger vacuum in the institution than she did when she was called elsewhere to new leadership. And now she is your leader. And in the East Texas vernacular that she would all, she would understand, y'all done good. Um, <clears throat> my charge is to challenge you as an institution to make the most of this unique opportunity to harness and use the many qualities that she brings. She brings experience at multiple jobs from several different institutions. She has served and prospered in many roles with state and federal agencies. Her peer group organizations around the country have found her to be most capable and have moved her to top posi positions. But the presidency is another step and her own skill and passion and drive will go a long way. However, as an institution, you are a key partner in her success as a leader. She will open new doors for you with her creativity, her energy, and her commitment, but you must walk through those doors with her. In the 53 years now since I first stepped on a college campus as a student, and I continue to try to maintain some contact as a consultant and a board member on a, an institutional board, uh, I have never known a more challenging time in the life of higher education, particular faith-based education, than today. The changing values of our culture are pressing hard against the core values of institutions like Huntington University. Financial exigency and political correctness will push hard upon you to abandon some of your foundational moral and spiritual principles. And as we have seen at many institutions over the years, the easy road is to soften one's spiritual core commitments. As board members, faculty, staff, students, and friends of the university, encourage her to stay firm in your commitments and back her when these pressures are threatening her leadership. Your spiritual mission is what makes you distinctive as an institution. The noted British theologian, Ian Thomas, made a statement in a chapel address that I heard when I was an undergraduate, and I've never forgotten it. In his best British dialect, he said, I am what I am by virtue of what he is in and through me. You are, as an institution, what you are by virtue of what Christ is in and through you. Dr. Emberton, as a president will be what she can be based upon what Christ is in and through her. The pressures of maintaining and growing enrollment, the undergirding element of private colleges will be challenging. Increased cost pressures and public governmental resistance to paying for college. As many people in our country no longer believe a college is a privilege to attend, but students believe that it is their right and somebody else ought to pay for it and not themselves. Remember that each and every one of you is responsible for maintaining a quality mission matched student body. The best, best marketing tool is a satisfied customer. 
in the classroom, in the residence hall, on the athletic field, and in the community. You all have a responsibility to make the Huntington experience a fulfilling and rich experience, one that makes the added cost of attending such an institution worthwhile. The need for additional resources will grow only stronger, and we've already entered a time frame when much of the nation's private wealth is being passed to a new generation, from a nation of people who saw themselves as givers to a younger generation who seem more inclined to be keepers and spenders. And we all have to help in finding new resources for this institution. The challenges of leadership are significant, but with God's partnership and blessing, it will be possible to continue to succeed. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, Daniel says, what will be the outcome of all of this as he faced the many issues of his life? And then he replies by answering that question. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. As an institution, you need to continue to seek God's wisdom and his righteousness. You need to partner with your new president and not let her carry the full load. Dr. Emberton will work hard because she loves Christian higher education. She will soon grow, if she hasn't already, to love Huntington University, and she will surely love your students. In a recent article written by Dr. Jim Dennison, the president of the Dennison Forum on Truth and Culture, he quoted, of all people, Lady Gaga. The quote made me think about Sherilyn. <laughs> not because, not because, to my knowledge, not because she holds Lady Gaga in high esteem. I don't think she does. And as an aside, you know, as a musician, I guess that's what Lady Gaga is. Sherilyn is a, a very fine musician, and if you have not yet discovered that, she plays a mean mandolin. And we used to accuse her of playing on Friday nights at a local country western place, and she always denied it, but you need to find out uh, something about those musical talents. Anyway, Lady Gaga is said to have said about herself, quoted by Dr. Dennison, quote, I am focused on the work. I am constantly creating. I am a busy girl. I live and breathe my work. I love what I do. I believe in the message. Couldn't Dr. Emberson, Emberton have said that? I think she could have. She will work hard. She will love her work, and she absolutely believes in the message. I pray that as an institution, you will love her, that you will work hard beside her, that you will be transparent and supportive of her and let her be transparent with you, and that you will certainly uphold her in your prayers. Prayer is such a powerful tool, and I just finished reading a book that was given to me by Mark Bast Batterson, the pastor of the National Community Church in Washington, D.C., and in his best-selling book, uh, The Circle Maker, he challenges us to draw prayer circles around other people and around other things and to pray. He says, pray like it depends on God, but work like it depends on you. Prayer and hard work are a good combination. Commit to do that with and for President Emberton. Dr. Emberton, we are so very proud of you. I am so personally very proud of you. With the help of God and all that make up this fine institution, I know you will succeed and God will be honored here. I know that Huntington University is going to learn to love and appreciate you as your many colleagues and friends around the country have so learned. We commit you to God and we will stand with you as you provide leadership over this wonderful university. What a blessing to be a part of this service, a person we love being inaugurated a university community with whom we are yoked in the cause of Christ-centered higher education celebrating, and all to the glory of the great God of the universe whom we serve. Thank you, Sherilyn, for the honor of being a part of this moment with you. 
My task is to bring a charge to the students, faculty, and staff of Huntington. I want you to know at the outset that this is a good thing that you're doing. This is the right thing that you are doing. It is, I believe, as God intended it to be. A group of believers seeing in an individual the gifts and talents God has given and setting apart that person formally and publicly as the president of the institution. We honestly and faithfully believe that Sherilyn is here as president of Huntington University because that is God's will. What you are doing here is good. Let's immediately turn our mind's attention and our heart's affection to God's word. Paul wrote to the churches in Ephesus something completely appropriate to our occasion. He wrote, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, and 15 and 16. As Christians, we believe that ceremonies such as this are more than simply pomp and circumstance. They are public expressions of commitment and covenant. When the Presidential Search Committee at Huntington interviewed Sherilyn, they thought, she's the one. It's true. I know they felt that way because I could hear it in their voices as they called confirming their thinking. And I know that the students, faculty, and staff immediately understood she's the one when you met her for the first time after the announcement on April 26th. I know that because that was exactly my own experience and our community's experience at East Texas Baptist University. In the press release announcing Sherilyn's coming to ETBU, I called her winsome. After working with her and knowing her for several years, there are other words I could use. <laughs> Hardworking, dedicated, committed, faithful, professional, tenacious, conscientious, devoted, caring, quick-witted, competitive, excellent. You likely have seen all of these qualities in her already, and you will appreciate them more and more over time. But I always come back to the first word that came to mind after meeting her, winsome. Winsome means generally pleasing and engaging, often because of a childlike charm and innocence, cheerful, now the antonyms, the opposites of winsome, are things like dour, gloomy, glum, sulky, and sullen, and Sherilyn is none of those. <laughs> Some words related to wisdom, wi winsome are words like hopeful, optimistic, animated, lively, joyful, laughing, and glad. Now those words describe Sherilyn Emberton. And I like the additional thought of winsomeness. The joy and gladness in a winsome person comes from their love of Jesus Christ and always seeks to lead people back to Jesus. Sherilyn has some wonderful gifts. And she and the decision makers at Huntington have followed God, God's prompting in their call to this leadership position. And this is where the students, faculty, and staff come in. You see, in a few minutes, Sherilyn will step forward and be invested with the office of president of Huntington University. But you and I know that Huntington University is only going to be all it God intends it to become with God's guidance and your collective best efforts. 
The truth of the matter is, without the assistance of God, you cannot succeed. With his assistance, you cannot fail. And it's also true that your efforts dedicated to God's glory will be blessed by him and that your efforts are important to the fulfillment of Huntington's mission. So at this time, I'd like the faculty, staff, and students of Huntington to rise. My charge to you is live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the bond of unity, the spirit of unity through the bond of peace. Remember, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Speaking the truth in love, Huntington, grow to become in res every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ, and build Huntington up in love as each part does its work. Now I'd like to ask you to declare your intent. I'm going to ask you two questions, and I'd like you each to respond to the question, we will. So your voice is individual, but your commitment becomes collective. Here's the first question. Will all of you witnessing this day do all in your power to advance the cause of Christ-centered higher education at Huntington University? And will all of you pray for Sherilyn, honor her, and seek God's best for her and all members of this university community? Then may the favor of the Lord our God rest upon you. May he establish the work of your hands. Yes, may he establish the work of your hands. God bless you. Sherilyn, Mary Lou joins me in congratulating you on this special day of inauguration. As you have already learned, being president of a place like HU is a special privilege for many reasons, but especially because of the community where it's located. We know that from personal experience, having lived here for 12 years and having watched it grow. Special people live here as your neighbors and friends, and now I believe they are eager to participate with you in your vision for the future. The city of Huntington is but one of the many communities that you now have become part of. There are many other places, larger and smaller, that will also ask for both your interest and your attention. And there's also a partner church and other churches which have their expectations of you as well. As you've already discovered, you serve multiple constituencies which often have competing, if not contradictory, needs and priorities. There will be frustrating days to be sure. And on those days, you may be tempted, as one sage put it, to post this note on your out of the office email response. Due to the present workload, the light at the end of the tunnel has been turned off until further notice. <laughs> so how do you navigate this kind of community labyrinth of well-intentioned well-wishers, knowing, of course, that you'll not be able to satisfy every request or respond favorably to every need. Well, I want to make two simple suggestions. First, I want to challenge you to focus on what God has called you to do here, not on everything that needs to be done. Now, what do I mean? One morning, as Mary Lou and I were reading the scriptures together, we both were captivated by this verse in John chapter 17, verse 4. Father, I have finished everything you gave me to do. Well, she said, what do you think about that verse? And I quickly noted that it reminded me that I needed to be better organized, more efficient in order to be more effective if I wanted to accomplish everything that needed to be done. Her gentle response, you missed the whole point of the verse. Read it again. 
And this time I read, Father, I have completed everything you gave me to do. Sherilyn, you'll be tempted to want to do everything that needs to be done at this place. And unfortunately, time and money will not always be your allies in this task. So focus on what God has called you to do here. He has promised to supply that need, both in terms of time, talent, and money. And my second charge is this one. Never stop loving the people you serve. As I have learned from others, a leader's job is to absorb the chaos, give back calm, and provide hope to those you serve. Always be tough on the issues, but be soft with people. Sometimes we get that backwards. We're tough on people, but soft on the issues. And people may sometimes forget your words, but seldom will they forget how you made them feel on the journey. So love them, always, no matter what the situation or how difficult the circumstance. And what will enable you to do that in the midst of difficulty is a daily withdrawal from the reservoir of God's love and his word. To all of you, Mary Lou and I believe that the Lord has blessed this university with an exceptional leader. Welcome her, embrace her, celebrate her, pray for her, and trust God with her as she leads you in the days ahead. Again, Sherilyn, congratulations and welcome to Huntington University. Dr. Emberton, Sherilyn, I want to congratulate you on this very consequential day in your life and in the life of the university. There is no doubt whatsoever that you are God's person for Huntington University at this time in our history. Your energetic and strategic leadership, empowered by the enabling work of the Lord, will ensure that the university thrives as a place that offers high-quality, Christ-centered education. I am very grateful that God chose someone your outstanding credentials and, yes, winsome style to lead Huntington University as our 13th president. While I am well aware that I have no authority as a former president to direct or charge you with anything or to do anything, but as a colleague, friend, and predecessor, I'd like to offer several pieces of advice that presidential colleagues and our Lord kept teaching me throughout my presidency. The first piece of advice comes from a respected academic leader, Dr. Niels Hassemol, former president of the University of Minnesota and the Association of American Universities, and the advice is this, be community-minded. I know that you have already discovered that the presidency is the most exciting, intense, ever-changing, demanding, stretching, and satisfying job you will ever have, and that's on a slow day. As you go about your daily work, remember that this very large task is not yours alone. Dr. Hasselbaugh, in his inauguration as the president of the University of Minnesota, stated this foundational truth. Presidents don't make colleges great. Communities do. Your presidential task, your work in ensuring Christ-centered excellence at Huntington, is shared with wonderful partners. It's shared with a gifted faculty and staff who will stretch and encourage you and will impress you with their insights, wisdom, and commitment to our mission. It's shared with special students who will inspire you with their energy, their creativity, and their desire to learn and to grow in their Christian walk. It's shared with supportive trustees who will encourage you and provide wisdom and accountability. It's shared with local community members who will stand with you and will become among your greatest advocates and friends. And it's shared with wonderful alumni who will pray for you and motivate you with their tremendous love for alma mater. I would encourage you to view your presidential role as one that is shared with gifted and willing colleagues, friends, and advisors. The second piece of advice 
comes from one of my presidential heroes, Dr. David Winter. Dr. Winter was the enormously effective president of Westmont College for 25 years. Toward the end of his presidency, he reflected on his long tenure as president, and he made this startling statement. I go into the office each morning, he said, just a little scared that I will not be able to do the job. Here was a giant in the academic world, in my mind, a president that was listed by the Exxon Foundation as one of the 100 most effective US college leaders, who was admitting his vulnerability, admitting that the job, he did, which he did very well, was very large and very complex. But most of all, he was admitting his daily dependence on the Lord. Such dependence calls for a deep commitment to the Lord, a continuous prayer life, a daily admission that the presidential task cannot be accomplished without the wisdom, guidance, strength, and encouragement that comes from the Lord. I would encourage you to continue to recognize your dependency in the Lord. And when success comes, recognize that it's from him and that he deserves the honor and the glory due his name. Because scripture teaches us that God is most glorified when we are wholly dependent on him. So this advice is timely and true. Be dependent on the Lord. The last piece of advice comes directly from our Lord and his word, and it's this. Be bold, be strong, be courageous. These are interesting and challenging days for higher education. Reduce government funding, increase governmental regulations, concerns about college costs and the utility of a college degree, and increased competitions from alternate higher education providers are among the concerns that I know have already consumed your daily work. For Christ-centered institutions, these are also days of great opportunity as well as great challenge. Dr. Tom Howard of Gordon College recently affirmed this when he said, this is a challenging but promising moment for America's Christian colleges. And this challenging moment, full of opportunity, requires bold leadership. Moses and Joshua and David and Jehoshaphat and Hezekiah and Christ himself gave this charge, which I can affirm, be bold, strong, and courageous. And where does our ability come from to meet that charge? It comes from our reliance on God's wisdom and strength, on his promise that he will never leave or forsake us, and our, our knowledge of what God has accomplished in the past and what he will accomplish in the future. So scripture charges you, therefore, be bold, strong, and courageous. Well, these are some lessons that God continually taught me during my presidency and they serve as a charge to you as our new president. I charge you therefore, be bold in your leadership as you daily demonstrate complete dependence on the Lord, always recognizing that the presidential task is shared with gifted colleagues and friends and that any success is a gift from the Lord and demonstrates his honor and his glory. Congratulations again on this wonderful moment for you and for the university. Please be assured that Chris and I will join thousands of the Huntington University family in praying for you as you boldly leave Huntington University into a dynamic future. May God richly bless you in the days ahead. Dr. Emberton, you have been chosen to lead this institution of higher education by the Huntington University Board of Trustees, acting, acting upon our faith in God and his direction. The position you assume, that of authority as university president, is worthy of respect and loyalty. As colleges and universities were founded during the medieval era to enlighten individuals through spiritual and academic knowledge, and were led by learned and respected individuals, so too do we now look to you to provide the guidance and progressive leadership that Huntington University de desires and needs to provide men and women with knowledge of truth. You as president are asked to provide counsel, spiritual witness, discipline, goals, and fellowship to this community of believers who serve God through work in higher education we pledge to you, as we have our Father, our best and continued efforts to please him, 
through service at Huntington University. It is with great confidence in the Lord's working at Huntington University and the abilities and competencies that he has bestowed upon you that by the authority invested in me as the chair of Huntington University of Board of Trustees, I hereby install you as the 13th president of Huntington University and invest you with all the power and authority pertaining to that office. Congratulations and may God bless you. This is a glorious day. Praise be to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. The school bell resting in the Richland Library Flag Plaza first rang out across the campus of Hartsville College located in Bartholomew County, Indiana. Hartsville College was chartered in 1850 and the bell hung in the college administration building until fire destroyed the 48-year-old campus. Flames and heat cracked the bell in several places and weakened the tower so that the bell fell to the pavement. Trustees of Hartsville and its northern counterpart, Central College, located in Huntington, Indiana, had been meeting prior to the fire. Both academic institutions were owned by the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, and a merger was being considered. The fire settled all discussions, and Hartsville College was closed. Hartsville students and faculty were soon pursuing academic studies at Central. Twenty years after Central opened its doors, its name changed to Huntington College, reflecting the growing relationship between the campus and the community. In 2005, the college changed its name to Huntington University. The presidential medallion contains in its center an image of the Becker Hall Bell Tower. Although not the bell that has graced the three Christian liberal arts colleges owned and operated by the Church of the United Brethren Christ, it represents the educational heritage and Christian commitment offered all students who have enrolled at Hartsville, Central, and Huntington. As this country was founded upon religious freedom and faith in God our Father, so has this campus promoted freedom through truth and knowledge. To constantly remind the Huntington University community of the direction and importance of its endeavors to serve the Lord through higher education, the presidential medallion bears beneath the engraved bell inscribed scripture, John 8, 32. The truth shall make you free. Would the members of the Huntington University Board of Trustees please stand? As a token of the authority of the Huntington University Board of Trustees, I now bestow upon you the presidential medallion, which will serve as a symbol of your office. May God bless the wearer and the institution which presents it. Please be seated. Thank you. Well, welcome. Welcome to the campus of Huntington University, and it is beautiful. Thank you for coming to our party, and we have had a party. We're going to have one after this ceremony as well, and we invite you to the reception over in Habecker Dining Commons. I am truly blessed beyond measure to be asked to serve in leadership in higher education, to be asked to serve at a Christ-centered institution is humbling beyond measure, and thank you. Thank you to our Board of Trustees. Thank you to our platform participants. 
and guests for sharing in this momentous occasion. Thank you for the delegates that have traveled such a long way. So many of you are such dear friends of mine. Thank you for caring to come. Thank you for representing your great institutions and for furthering the righteous cause of higher education. Special thanks to my family, my mom, Shirley Bratton, my brother and his wife, Tanya and Kevin Emberton, my niece, Caitlin, and my cousins, Phil and Babs McCoy. Thank you, members of PACE, our faculty, our staff, our students, our university friends. Huntington University celebrates a rich heritage of faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, our tagline is Christ, Scholarship, and Service. This past year, HU students logged 8,400 hours of service in ministry to Northeast Indiana, across the United States, and the globe. 70% of our students volunteer annually to be difference makers in their world. At HU, faith focused is what we do. We are committed to being excellent in all areas of our campus. And our academic programs continue to produce top graduates in such diverse fields as fusion media, nursing, kinesiology, social work, and the core liberal arts fields of English, history, the sciences, as well as strong in the performing arts and ministry. For our adult students, we support programs in nursing, education, counseling, and businesses at three locations in Northeast Indiana online. And drum roll, please. In the fall, we will begin our first doctoral level program in occupational therapy. Woohoo! HU students distinguish themselves with honors in many ways, with recent Addy Award winners, NAIA Academic Student Athlete, Alpha Chi, to name a few. At Huntington University, we celebrate the concept of the student athlete. We offer 17 intercollegiate sports for men and women, and our sports teams are second to none. In fact, our Foresters Saturday will compete for the championship of the Crossroads League in men's tennis. We are Right. HU boasts 53 NAIA All-American Honors and 187 All-American Scholar Athletes. Amazing. We also provide rich co-curricular experiences in the arts, student leadership, and ministry. And if you'll permit me, I'll brag just a little more. This year alone, the university received recognition from Princeton Review as one of the best colleges in the Midwest. We made the Ford's list of top colleges in the country. We made the US News and World Report as 16th best in the Midwest. We continue to be a military friendly school, best in the nation, third nationally in our sports ministry program. We were the second safest campus in Indiana. Now it's hard for me to brag on being second in anything, but I am gonna brag about that. And we were number one in the Reader's Choice Award by the Fort Wayne newspaper as best higher education institution. We are a blessed people doing amazing work in an anointed place for such a time as this. Now, who wouldn't want to be the president of Huntington University? But in an occasion such as today, there must also be a call to action, a glimpse of a forming vision by a new leader and I would like for just a few minutes to look beyond the affirmations of the past, beyond our core mission of Christ, scholarship, and service, to embrace three important footprints for our future. The first of these is engagement. Although at times we have had a very rich history of engagement, for the future we have no choice but to be more intentional. We have to engage with culture. We need to actively engage with culture at every point, but especially with difficult conversations that can be intentionally presented with a Christ and Christian worldview. We've been very blessed in this area. Huntington University led the way in the discussions of our community and maybe in our region with a Harmony Initiative in order that people of all faiths all kinds would feel welcome in our area. But more than that, we partnered with 
uh, Youth for Christ with a program called Horizon Scholars, which allowed us to go out and look for students of faith, students who had leadership characteristics, but who come from underrepresented populations. Today, there are 19 of them here in our audience, and I want to brag on you a little bit. Would you stand, please? Aren't they amazing? They are awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And they represent just the tip of what can happen when you engage in culture centered on Jesus Christ. We also have to engage with the church, and I am so blessed, we are so blessed to be associated with the United Brethren in Christ denomination. They are our partners in all we do. We also partner with other evangelical people of God to be impactful. Now more than ever, I believe, we have to be yoked with a biblical foundation. As our government seeks to more strictly define religious organizations, they need to be aligned with a firm church tradition and doctrine because that may be the only guarantee of religious freedom for private faith-based educational institutions. We also have to engage with community and we are so blessed to enjoy a wonderful relationship with our city, with our county, uh, with our state, with our region. Uh, one example of that is how our alumni uh, go out and make a difference, and I'm thinking of Brooks as an alumnus, but also caring enough to invest his life as mayor of our city. I think of alums like Richard and Jenna Strick. Richard is the pastor of St. Peter's Community Church downtown, making a difference for all of humanity, and his wife as executive director of the United Way, young alums making a difference. I think about the work we've done regionally, and I was so glad to see Dave Ron walk in today, but he and Larry Lance, Trent Bushnell, are just a few that are involved with Youth for Christ who are changing the lives of young people where they live in the schools across our nation. And I think about globally. We were so privileged to just have Brad and Vanessa Johnson with us, who represent Haiti and Mission of Hope. Brad and Vanessa, uh, again, young alums who went to Haiti, while they were there, could not believe what was going on for children because they did not have enough food. Today, Mission of Hope has grown from a small mission located on a barren piece of land to a fruitful organization that now has an orphanage, a medical facility, a school, and a church. The second strand beyond engagement has to be entrepreneurship. We've got to learn to do business and do business internally. You know, the old formula for private higher ed is you raise the price three to five percent every year. You go to your donors at the end of the year and say, hey, we're short a little. Can you help us write a check? That formula won't work and it doesn't work anymore. People who give want to give to organizations that are on the rise, that are impactful and making a difference. And students want a good deal. They want a good education at a reasonable price. So we're gonna have to engage, and I wanna borrow an expression that we used a lot at East Texas Baptist University. We have to be not-for-profit as a not-for-profit institution, but we cannot be for loss. We also have to seek business externally. We have to learn to be a good partner. And it goes more than just town and gown relationships. It's changing the impact and the way that we engage with our uh, region and with our community. And we're learning to do that. One such example is the occupational therapy program that we are launching as a partnership uh, in location with Parkview Health System. That's how you do business externally. We were just recently at one of our local businesses, PhD. And, and had a tour, a great tour, and an opportunity to talk about internships and ways that our students can engage in real-world learning before they leave the college world. We also have to not only be engaged or practice entrepreneurship, but we have to practice entrepreneurship with his business spiritually. I can't let this occasion go without speaking about Orville and Ruth Merillat. Those are two people who started a business in their garage in the early 40s who went on to become the largest 
uh, maker of cabinets in the United States, but they never forgot that to give must be to give forward. To this date, we have received tens of millions of dollars for them, not to build buildings with just their name on it, to invest in students to make a difference. We have to raise a continued generation who understands that we must be about his business spiritually. The third thing that I want to encourage us about today, and the final strand, is emergence in everything Christianly. You know, guys, we're going to have to be cutting edge. No, let me change that. Leading edge, bleeding edge about who we are in Jesus Christ. And we have to do it first with faith integration. And we do that through what I call faith infusion. We have to get it right. We may be the only people group left that literally educates the next generation to align mission and vocation. In doing that with mission, the first thing is we have to stay clearly Christian. Out of 4,000 institutions, we're down to under 200 that actively agree to partner in pursuit of Jesus Christ. We've got to stay clearly conversational. And I'm so proud of the work of our faculty and staff or students doing. I'm thinking about um, Dr. Luke Fetters and Shoshana McKinney and many of them that are working with uh, teachers in China. And as they have these engagements with them and they teach them how to teach English in the schools and how to prepare them to teach, they have a segment at the end of the day called Continued Conversations. And it's there that many of those young teachers step forward and ask questions like, who is God? And how can you believe in God? How, how do you have hope? Continued Conversations. We also have to be clearly compassionate. And I think about the work that our students and many of our faculty, David Alexander is one, are doing in India who went over there and caught a vision for an orphanage and came back and our students raised money and went back and helped to build on that. We have to show the world we are compassionate. And last but not least, in being emergent in everything Christianly, is we have to be clearly competent. And I think about the work of Dr. Mark Fairchild who because he had a critical discovery of new learning in the country of Turkey was recognized by the Turkish government to come back and help lead an effort in which they were going to go into the schools and begin to talk about the world's religion. And when they thought of someone to go, they didn't go to Purdue and ask. They didn't go to University of Texas and ask. They came to Huntington University and asked someone who had clearly demonstrated competence to step forward and lead that mission. I was recently asked to define leadership. My feeble attempt was this, moving yourself, others, or an organization forward regardless of their past. However, I firmly believe that you can't lead people forward effectively until you lead them forward effectively, until you move them. As Christians, leading without the Lord it's like loving without a heart. My prayer is that I can learn to lead and to love heartily as to the Lord. The results will be to move people by an overwhelming love for God to do all things excellent. May God have all the glory at Huntington University. Thank you.
for the benediction. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we draw this inaugural celebration to a close, we honor you. You, eternal God, are creator of all that exists. You sovereignly guide the movements of your creation toward the reconciliation of all things back to yourself. And it is within that eternal purpose that you have brought us to this moment. You have provided every good gift to Huntington University. Among these gifts are her students, her facilities, her faculty and staff, her administration, her trustees, and her presidents, past and present. We thank you for bringing Cheryl and Emberton to Huntington University. We recognize in her a heart for you we pray that you will protect her heart. We recognize in her a sharp and quick intellect, and we pray that you will guide her mind and her decisions. We recognize in her story that your guiding hand has brought her experiences and gifts to a point of convergence with our need at this place and at this time for the good of your kingdom. Triune God, grant Huntington University the continuing privilege of ministering in this world in such a way that we magnify you in our scholarship and in our service. We join with the prophet Habakkuk as Huntington's verse of the year in saying, Lord, we have heard of your fame. We stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day. In our time, make them known. May the love of God our Father, may the grace of Jesus Christ our Savior, may the sustaining presence of the Holy Spirit our guide be upon President Emberton and upon us all. Amen. <laughs>